Alright guys, today I want to just make a comparison with cap and ball versus uh, conventional revolvers. And really the topic is which cap and ball revolver would you carry or shoot? Um, some people need to carry these because they have to, because of restrictions. Um, I like them mainly because they're fun. And just in case either ammo's gone or guns are made illegal, I'd like to have them, and um, it's, it's nice to have something else that could fill that role if you had to, which right now I don't have to, which is why I have my modern guns. Uh, so the two things that really matter are the weight and the size. And the size, the only thing that really matters, well, cylinder diameter and barrel length. Uh, those are the two that are going to be of importance when concealed carrying. Um, so the question specifically was asked, are you better off with, say, a Colt Pocket model, or are you better off with uh, a belt model that's been cut down? So Roberti and Pieta make these little chop-off versions that people like, but I'm going to show you why that's not really practical. So let's look at the weight to begin with. So I have few, I guess, carry-ish revolvers here. Now, this one of the three is the lightest. They're, these are all made of steel, uh, to be fair. Um, and this one is a SP-101, 3-inch, uh, 357 Magnum. Uh, and this one's a K-frame, 38 Special. This one's way too ca heavy to carry. I've tried, it just sucks. Uh, this one is only good for short bursts. Really would not be a good everyday carry, but a sometimes carry. Definitely a woods carry, which is what it mainly fills my role with. This one is light enough to actually um, carry every day if I were to. But usually I end up with... Let's see what's in my pocket right now. <laughs> An LCR. Just because it's so light. And lighter is better. It just is. So we'll, we'll get weights of all these uh, right now. So let's look at the weight here. So we're going to do this in grams just so it's easy to compare. doesn't really matter the units. So the one that I would normally carry is 375. And then when we go up to the steel, you can see a big jump. This one is 654. And this one is 771 so again it's getting it high up there and K-frame which is still going to be smaller than those other belt models is up in the 800s and so the model I always recommend is the pocket model which is at less than 700 so it's less than a 3 inch SP-101 which is a popular model by quite a bit actually and just a hair above the K6S so weight matters remember these are replicas but this was the last percussion model so you can see there's deep scalloping inside the uh, let's see in the sunlight there's deep scalloping inside the cylinder and there is um, uh, meat taken away here it's just opened up a little bit. This started as a 32 and they opened up to a 36. Now I've personally clocked this with a ball in triple seven powder over 900 feet per second. So this is about as powerful as a 380 uh, and 380 is nothing to sneeze at. It's definitely not an anemic caliber uh, with this uh, four inch barrel which keeps the loading lever. Um, it's not so long that you couldn't carry behind you. You're not going to carry this appendix. Uh, but the thinness is good too. Now I don't know if I meant to bring my hammer down here. I don't have one, but we'll compare the uh, cylinder size. Well, just for kicks, we'll throw this guy up here. 1250, yeah, it's ridiculously heavy. And the Remington. And this one's in 45. It's actually less because the uh, chambers are empty space, right? So bigger chambers more space. Um, but this Remington model with the top strap is the most reliable. So if you were to carry a 45, I would get maybe the Ace model uh, over the uh, Colt models because these 
will cap jam. Even with all the work done, this one has a smoothed out hammer, it's got the cap break and everything, and you, you still get caps in the side, and they still more likely to jam up. This is about as reliable as you get when it comes to uh, percussion caps. But uh, let me see if I can knock out the barrel so I can see what it's just like without a barrel. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, there we go. So, this is a zero inch barrel. So even with a zero inch barrel, this thing is almost 800 grams. You add barrel and whatever else, it's going to be more. So the pocket model is clearly better weight wise even with zero barrel which yours will have a barrel even if you get the ace so let's compare uh, sizes okay so I've got my calipers here and of course I don't have a good way to hold the camera I'll just pop it down for a second but I'll just read you off the uh, measurements so starting out with the pocket model here, we are looking at, at this widest part, 1.27 inches. So 1.27 here. Uh, compared to LCR, let's see if I can hold this up with my feet. 1.28, and the thinner part, 1.23. So it's very, very comparable size-wise. If you look at the cylinders, the scallop cylinder of LCR and of this, uh, this one's actually a little smaller. This 36. Um, if you go up to step up to, this is a 36 uh, model, so it's slightly smaller cylinder than a 45. The Navy, and we are at. 1.53 on that so that is larger than a k-frame by comparison here's my k-frame which is smaller than an l-frame 1.41 so the k-frame is smaller than even a 36 in this caliber because again this is a replica of a gun that was made of probably cast iron or it, at the best, weak steel. They didn't come up with silver steel till later. Like with this model, they had stronger steel. So they could make it even smaller. Um, this gun is even uh, wider than the, I already pre-measured the K6S. Um, of course, this is a five shot, so it's a lot smaller. Um, so these I put out of the question, even with the chopped off barrel, just the weight and the size are going to make them uncomfortable for everyday carry. Concealing just going to the store, yeah, okay, but if you're going to wear that every day, it's not going to happen. This I put in the pocket every day, not a problem. If this were to go away, I would get this. Even if you wanted to chop down the barrel even more and get rid of the loading lever, uh, that would be fine, uh, but you're still going to get, like I said, 900 feet per second out of this one with, with 777 uh, is not a bad load and you can put conicals in here you can put a flat nose a kaido style um, or you can get a lee makes a nice conical round nose bullet which i shoot out of this model and it works fairly well so um, let's see if you can see i know it doesn't look like that dramatic of a difference on camera but just the size of the grip if i can get this to stand up so you can see it there's a significant difference in the grip size, the frame, the cylinder, everything is just smaller on the pocket model. And when people actually were making this choice because this was all there was, this was the best selling Colt right here, the pocket model. Uh, the 49, I'm lumping the 49 with, with this one as well, um, which was 32 caliber, but People would rather carry the 32 than the 36 or the 35, given the choice, and I would as well. But given that this one's a 36 in almost the same size as a 32, made it 
a clear winner. And the only reason why this wasn't around longer was because of the cartridges that came out shortly after. Once the, uh, the patent ran out that Smith & Wesson had, uh, it was all about cartridges and uh, this one went by the wayside. But if that invention weren't around, I'm sure this would have been a big seller even uh, later into the century. So that's it. If you have any specific questions, let me know.